This guide is intended for people who haven't done any, or little, smartphone filmmaking. Often, the feeling is, where do I start? Because you feel there's so much to know, and it's overwhelming. The mountain just looks too big to climb, so you put it off for another day. I've tried to put enough information here to get you started, without burdening you with too much information and technical jargon, which can sometimes be off-putting for new filmmakers. Learn by doing. Firstly, when you're shooting on a smartphone, the basic principles of filmmaking apply. Pretty much every film or video camera is essentially doing the same job. So if you want to learn how to make films, I say go ahead, take the camera you have access to and learn by doing. You will learn a lot from shooting and editing. Those two activities are at the center of what you produce as a filmmaker. And there are tons of books, websites, and tutorials on the web which will cover more knowledge than you will ever be able to fit inside your head. Secondly, there really are no rules. Filmmaking is an art and you will discover your own voice, and your own method, by making films. There's no shortcut to becoming a filmmaker other than to spend as much time as you can filmmaking. However, when it comes to smartphone filmmaking, there are a number of things to think about, specific to the device. So here's a breakdown. You will need to think about stabilization. Stabilization isn't always required, but if you're doing handheld work you will get shaky shots. Well, you might want shaky shots, because it feels more human. If you're filming a running shot, it'll be wobbling all over. And you might want that. It won't be relaxing to watch, but it will be urgent. Shaky camera can put the audience more into the mind of the character slash s, this way. Imagine you're filming a character running away from an angry grizzly bear. If the shot is perfectly smooth, it'll be fine, but the audience will feel like onlookers, witnesses to a poor guy running in terror. However, if the shot is jerking around chaotically, in pace with the character running for his life, the audience will almost feel like they are in the scene, running for their lives too. If you're thinking about stabilizing your camera, there's different types available. The most obvious one is mounting your smartphone on a tripod, or similar device. Simply holding the camera in your hands will result in the most shakiness. Because the camera is so small and light, any slight movement is exaggerated. Tripods Mounted on a tripod, your camera will be stationary and your shot options will be limited to completely still, pan left and right or tilt up and down. But if you want to keep your camera mobile, here are some other options. Optical Image Stabilization, OIS Optical image stabilization works by moving lens elements to counteract wobbly hand-induced camera shake. It's now a mainstay feature of flagship smartphones. OIS is great for stills photography, but it can cause issues with video. You might notice a strange wobbly effect as you're watching your footage back, especially if your camera is making sharp movements. If you are panning or walking slowly whilst filming, OIS can usually handle it. The filmmaker isn't even moving. I'm certainly no expert in this field, but I believe the buffeting of the wind is creating lots of sharp camera movements, which the OIS then tries to rectify, creating a weird jelly-like effect in parts of the image. With slower movements, this effect is less noticeable. For that reason, you might be advised to switch off the OIS completely, as natural handshake is probably less of an issue. I've been a victim of this in my films and am still working out how best to avoid the wobbliness. Non-mechanical grip. If your device doesn't have OIS, or if you just want to add a little extra stabilization, or if you simply don't like the way OIS works, to remove some of that exaggerated movement caused by the smallness of the smartphone, you can attach a simple grip. Before motorized gimbals became the thing to use, Many smartphone filmmakers turn to these simple grips to add some weight and size and, well, grip to your device. Simple mechanical grip, the gimbal. A gimbal is a pivoted support that allows the rotation of an object about a single axis. A simple hand grip and counterweight like this adds some smoothness to your handheld shots. 
the pivot and weight counteracts the movement of your hand, to some extent. There's a load of these available and they're not too expensive. However, the pivot weight mechanism can become your enemy if it starts to swing around like a pendulum. Motorized Gimbal Handheld 3-axis gimbals are used in stabilization systems designed to give the camera operator the independence of handheld shooting without camera vibration or shake. Powered by three brushless motors, the gimbals have the ability to keep the camera level on all axes as the camera operator moves the camera. In short, the 3-axis gimbal works to give your footage a smooth, gliding look. The kind of shot that used to require an expensive steady cam setup, can now be achieved with your phone using a device which can cost less than $100. You will need to think about manual control. It's perfectly okay to shoot using your smartphone camera's automatic controls. In fact, smartphone cameras are really designed to be used that way. They are designed primarily for ease of use. Low-budget digital filmmakers often have a bit of an obsession with something that has become known as the cinematic look. However, how you shoot your film is an entirely creative choice. You might find you like what the automatic controls do, or that they are simply more convenient when getting a certain shot. For example, what if a shot really requires speed on your part? Hesitation might cause you to miss the moment. In which case, keeping control set to automatic will help you focus on nothing but getting that shot. That said, you should seriously think about using manual controls. On automatic, as you move the camera the image will change, the exposure settings will change as the light changes, the focus point adapts to whatever object is in the focus finder, and the color balance can change too. If you pan left or right, unless the area you are filming has uniform lighting, the automatic exposure on your camera will start shifting the settings as the camera moves. So how do you use manual controls on a smartphone camera? Most smartphones come with their own operating system for the camera. Usually, by opening the camera app on your phone, you will find some settings somewhere which allow you to start setting the camera manually. Operating systems vary, according to the phone. So you will have to explore and experiment with your own device to see what can be done. Camera apps If you find your inbuilt camera app to be tricky or limiting, there are a number of downloadable video camera apps, for both iOS and Android. These apps generally make your smartphone camera easier to control. By far the most well-known is Filmic Pro. This app has famously been used by many well-known filmmakers, including Sean Baker and Steven Soderbergh, who both shot feature films using the iPhone and Filmic Pro combo. And if you consider they have both directed Oscar-nominated or Oscar-winning films, there really can no doubt that these are serious tools for serious filmmakers. I'm not going to go into the details of how to use Filmic or other camera apps. There's already a huge amount of tutorials online taking you through everything you could possible want to know. Here's the Filmic Pro quick start guide to get you off and running. But to outline the basics, there's three things you need to think about having a manual control over, focus, exposure and white balance. Focus. You need to think about what you intend to focus on in the shot. Will this change during the shot? If so, how will you accomplish this? Are you going to use the autofocus to do a kind of focus pull for you? Or will you attempt it manually, if you have focus control? Exposure. This a big topic, which I'm just going to talk about briefly to get you started. Every film or video camera is challenged in low light, or indeed high brightness, situations. But the most common situation we find ourselves struggling with is low light. In a low light situation, if left on auto, your smartphone camera will boost the gain. This often results in video noise appearing in your footage. Many people find this to be undesirable and ugly to look at. That doesn't mean it's wrong. But it's something to think about. ISO. To reduce noise in low light situations, the best things to do is try to keep the ISO setting as low as possible. Every camera is different, but a general tip is to keep it at or below 100 ISO. Once you reduce your ISO to that level, 
you might find the image is too dark for your liking. So what do you do now? Your choice is to either introduce more lighting somehow, or accept that you have to have some image noise. By the way, you can also remove noise using various software when you come to edit your footage. However, this adds to your job later down the line and I recommend you do everything you can to get the image looking good at the point of filming. White Balance If you have a white balance setting on your smartphone, play around with it and see how the image changes color from blue to green to orange and so on. The reason we adjust white balance is to get the colors in our footage as accurate as possible. You will need to think about audio. Smartphones have some pretty good inbuilt microphones. Well, perhaps that's not surprising. Did you know that phones were once audio only devices? I know, crazy isn't it? My phone is a Samsung S9 and the stereo mics are really amazing for picking up crisp and spatial stereo audio. What these mics are not so good at achieving is that close mic sound we're used to hearing in films and TV shows. To get that sound you will have to either use a shotgun mic or a lavalier mic. As I will keep saying, you can shoot your movie using just the smartphone and its inbuilt features, including mics. Even with dialogue or live voice, of some kind. If you film with inbuilt mics, and want to record actors or people speaking, you will have to make allowances for the limitations of these mics. I have done this myself, using Adobe Audition to clean up and treat the voice. Improvise, be creative. Andrea and I were filming a Kickstarter video. In one shot, she was going to be moving down an escalator, away from the camera, as she delivered a line. I had her shout the lines, because otherwise the mics couldn't have picked up what she was saying clearly. But it worked and perhaps added some extra drama to the shot. Another example of improvising while filming, in the first episode of Silent Eye, there was a scene where the actor, Zoe, was walking along talking to her boyfriend on her smartphone. We were about to shoot the scene with the sound record EIST, when it hit me, Zoe is talking directly into the mic of her phone as part of the scene. All she had to do was set her audio recorder running and we could use that audio. I also had the ambient audio from the phone I was using as the camera. In the edit, I combined these two audios, adjusting the levels to get the right mix between the close mic audio and the ambient audio, so it sounded natural. Using external microphones. Getting good audio is one of the trickiest parts of making a film. And it's one area where smartphone filmmakers sometimes don't put enough thought. When you're just getting started as a filmmaker, recording the audio is often bottom of your priority list. The visuals are what gets most filmmakers excited. So that means the focus is on cameras, camera apps, gimbals, etc. Shoot silent. We're into our fifth year running a smartphone film festival and one thing we see is a lot of silent films, by silent, I mean no live voice, but usually music is placed on after. That's okay, silent films can be awesome. Telling a story with nothing but visuals can also be a brilliant exercise in filmmaking. It really forces you to think of image and how each image cuts together to tell a story. And, of course, it saves you having to worry about recording audio. Recording live audio. Although recording live audio adds an extra complication to your shoot, it's not so difficult you have to abandon the idea altogether. This is what I use, and have used for nearly every film I've made in the last 8 years a Sennheiser MKH416. This microphone has been an industry standard for decades. But it's not cheap, about 700 pounds. I have a Rode Boompole Plus windshield and pistol grip system. This records onto an external recorder, the Zoom H4n, which I've also had for 8 years. You can buy some great shotgun mics for under $400. Think about background noise when choosing locations. To get good audio quality, think about where you are filming. Is it a noisy street with buses and trucks roaring past? Is it a big empty room which will cause the voice to have large amounts of echo and reverberation from the hard surfaces? One of the most common issues is air conditioning. When you check out a location, 
and you're focused on how cool it looks, and because we're all so used.